man, I have to give Ben though some credit because <clears throat> he is doing blog after blog about all his episodes. So you gotta give him props for that. What's going on, Hood Nation? It's your DFX with the rants here. We are gonna be talking about, and this is probably gonna be the one of the longest rants that I'm ever going to be doing. So stay with me, you guys. Uh, it's Ben Singer. Uh, for those of you I'm assuming would know, he is a huge big deal of Death Battle. He is one of the original creators. And he used to do his research, but now other people do his research. But I guess let's just get into what this is all about. Uh, for the last how many days, it sounds like he's doing daily blogs here. I don't know if that pertains to the episodes in general. Either way, his goal is to go from episode 1 to 100 because their 100th episode is coming very soon. This is probably the most controversial uh, fight was Goku versus Superman. So I'm going to be doing my best to read uh, his highlights. I'm definitely going to put the link in the description below so you guys can read it all yourself. And I'm going to give my commentary on here and see if I agree, disagree you know, on some of his points. I'm sure he's got some very good points. I'm just kind of curious to see how his mind has been sense and now like is it better is it worse is it the same i don't know so we're just gonna get started right now for writing this episode i reached out to several experts on dragon ball and dc comics to make sure i had certain facts and thoughts right about the characters okay so i'm going to stop right here and i'm going to mention that he said he watched every episode of dragon ball z i remember there was a clip with him and chad discussing snake ways that's how they use as their speed feet so, I just want to just plant the seed that, that's, remember, and even in the, in, in the show, they use Snake Way as a speed feat, which many people will clearly disagree with from the Dragon Ball community. Uh, the Kaizen shoe. okay, so they know about the, the actual, bi the official Bible, which, it's still kind of a, whatever. The Dio Dragon Ball Superman site, Superman homepage, we're awesome enough to help. Make sure I un truly understood the characters. As far as the episode itself goes, it's a pretty epic event. I still think there are plenty of problems with it, though. The calculations were a bit messy and presented as if arbitrary. There are a couple on-screen typos which confuse the hell out of a lot of people. Our description and implementation of power scaling is very misleading. And the episode's way too long with some awkward pacing, especially during the post-fight recap that just starts to drag. But we covered a lot of good stuff. I'm still pretty proud of how much we were able to jam into it without it feeling forced. From kryptonite to mind reading to the magical power pull and so on. Overall, given that what we were working with, I like what we did here. Okay, so at least he kind of, he admits obviously that there was the calculations, the power scaling, um, the typos there was. Obviously like the Super Saiyan numbers and there, there was definitely a lot of typos and such. So, okay, it's nice to know that he's at least owning up to it because, you know, some people out there won't, won't even do that, right? So that's cool. Let's go on here. I can't say the same for Goku Superman 2, though. I refrained from saying this previously because I know that without clarity, it'd be easy for this to be taken out of context. But Goku vs. Superman 2 is my least favorite death battle we've ever done. Whoa! Looks like he admitted it. The battle side animation, of course. Yeah, no. Torian, yeah. Torian gives me goosebumps. I got goosebumps right now thinking about that fight. It was very good. Animation was amazing. Though it's not really because of any particular content of the episode itself, though like the original it's post, fight recap, it's also poorly paced. Rather, the biggest problem was that it was horrendously ill-advertised. Okay, so now it sounds like he, we're going to get some more, I want to see kind of what he, what he, where he's going with this right now. So, here's the thing. After Goku Superman made its explosive debut, I had publicly mentioned how we cut around 20 minutes of the script to keep the episode at a watchable length. I would have watched it all, by the way, because I love you guys, but I digress. I didn't plan on making a sequel, but I had been brainstorming ways to release that content. Later, Screw Attack Manager at the time approached me about turning some of the removed script into another episode that would serve as an extension, hence, okay. We wanted it to be shown as at our SGC convention, which was coming up. I figured we could do that. It wouldn't require a lot of additional research outside of adding... A little info concerning Super Saiyan God and New 52 was known at the time, so our comparatively short time frame wouldn't be an issue. We had actually been getting a ton of requests to pit Super versus, or Superman versus Super Saiyan God, so it seemed like a good way to put it off even while so little information was known concerning the form. Yeah, I definitely, um, okay, I will see where he's going with this. I cannot stress enough, Goku Superman 2 was never meant to be a complete re-examination of the characters. It was only meant to be a continuation of the previous episode. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, it was instead promoted as a rematch, which definitely had, gave a lot of people the wrong impression. It didn't help that I wrote a, a line in the fight where Goku literally challenges Superman to a rematch. So that's on you, buddy. <laughs> which makes sense in the world of the fight itself, but it definitely misrepresents the, our intentions in the episode. There was also some confusion over whether or not we'd be focusing on New 52. I assume this came out about due to the Superman model we used for the fight. That's true, that's true, that's New Super... Okay, 52. I still remember the moment when I walked in there in that year and was surprised to see Goku vs. Superman 2 advertising literally everywhere. The episode was hyped up to an extreme, and I didn't say or do anything to change this when I should have. Okay, there's some humility there. I, I gotta respect that, you know. What ended up happening was akin to the unintentional and completely unnecessary kick in the nuggets to the Dragon Ball audience. I learned a lot from that. I think that was Death Battle's biggest turning point in its journey toward what it is today. I have to agree, man. You guys... You guys dropped the ball, man, like, really bad with that. That was... And, and even just the explanation. I'm gonna see if you if you, I'm gonna see what what else you're gonna talk about. I guess here. Anyway, yesterday, y'all left some questions for me, so let's get to those. All right. If you can go back in time and tell yourself what to do different about Goku Superman, what would it be? Okay, I'd say that when this episode was greenlit, Dragon Ball franchise seemed like it wasn't going anywhere. Then halfway through production, surprise, Battle of Gods was announced. Okay, I, you're right, because that was 2015-ish. This was 2013-14, someone can correct me, but either way, you're okay. Along with the new super form, its very existence would essentially delegitimize this death battle before it was even out. Plus, if we had waited, I would have developed further experience presenting a more serious exclamation and could have probably written a clear analysis that was easier for all viewers to actually accept. I think this episode in particular would have benefited from coming later in Dragon Ball's history. Though I'm not sure how that would have affected Death Battle as a whole, though. This episode was pretty integral to getting us to where we are today. Will Goku ever get another matchup? I'd love to bring Goku back. Doing episodes with returning characters is always kind of iffy, though. And as some people may see it as one less chance for a character they want, I usually base it on whether or not there's a lot of demand to see the character again. Okay, so he's right. He obviously wants to make sure that other requests are being fulfilled. And of course, he said he bases it though on whether there's a lot of demand for a character. I would have to say Goku is probably one of the most demanded characters to come back. In fact, they probably get spammed all the time from just people. Goku, 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 Naru, 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 Superman, 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 you know, like Luffy, 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 like Sonic, 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 Sonic. I'm sure they get, but of course they have to, you have, I mean, I like how he wrote it, but at the same time, the way he should have mentioned it here was, he should have kind of really stuck to his guns, is that, you know, I kind of really wanted to more other characters to kind of get in there, even though I know we have a lot of demand for some of the previous characters. Because at least then he would, he would acknowledge it. This kind of double standards him in a sense, because I'm willing to bet that Goku is being still demanded insanely a lot. I guarantee it. And super, you know, like, I, I just guarantee it. So, you know, but it's cool. I, I, I get what you're saying, but I feel that a lot of people, they don't see the bigger picture, so they're going to assume, they'll take this at face value. I'm not saying go off on conspiracies and theories, but you get my point. Your reasoning for Superman's victory is no limits fallacy. That is not a good argument. I have to agree with that. For the unaware, a no limits fallacy is a concept that when a character's exact limits are not known, and it's implied or stated that they are capable of far greater feats than what is shown, then the character is deemed to have no limits whatsoever, despite the fact that it's probably possible they exist and we just never seen them. This is true of the episode's argument to an extent, although it is supported by official materials such as Superman 1 million. I mentioned how the fourth death battle rule at the time was problematic and that it allowed a character's potential to run rampant through non-canon sources with little to no restriction. Now when he says no non-canon, I don't know if he means continuity or if he straight up means like a non-official artist. Like, you know, fan mail. If I made a fan Dragon Ball comic and be like, Goku farts and blows up the whole universe and every universe next to him dies and then Zeno just has to keep snapping his fingers to bring it back to life. That's how Goku takes a dump every day. Zeno has to just repair it every day and he's getting sick of it but he has to do it because Goku's that strong. See my point? Like, 
that's non-canon because I'm not hired by Toriyama. I don't work for Funimation. I don't work for Toei. So he's, this is kind of a, like I said, I take that word in the literal sense. Canon and continuity, they are a thing, and they're very, very important to distinguish it. Um, so anyways, I absolutely understand why some people contest this argument, as the rules and process of death battle at the time isn't exactly what people most likely expected, particularly those of the Versus community, which has developed its own rules, which death battle has entirely different ones different from. Again, early death battle was more of an interpretive process using logic rather than a scientific one using numbers and statistics. Uh, sort of. Because the early ones, you definitely guys were using some numbers. But, given how death battle was structured at the time, examining the core of their character purposes seemed like the right call. Okay, so, when he says early, once again, this is... I'm not going to say it's vague, but Actually, I guess that would be the right word, because when you say early, I mean anything prior to episode 25 is early, or do you mean the first five episodes? Where, where I guess, where, where is your early definition in here? I lo I'm loving that you're, you're responding to people. I just, in my mind, I'm like, I don't know what early is, because <laughs> I, I, I call 18-year-olds children and kids. They don't think they're kids, because in their mind, they're adults, and my, but... You know me, like you and Ben, like we're older. We know, like they're they're still children. They're kids. They, their brain, their frontal lobe ain't fully developed. You get my point? Like they might think they are full blown adults, but they they still do some dumb shit, and, and that's okay. The point is, is that's that's what early. You know, it's it's hard to know what part of here you're trying to explain, and based on how I'm perceiving it, I don't. I see it as a contradiction because you were using logic and stuff. So, just for FYI, try to, I don't, I don't know if you'll ever watch this, try to really show, like, that part. Because it's very hard for anyone to really know what you mean by that. Superman may get infinitely stronger under the sun, and that takes time. So, good and Goku kill him before then. Well... Goku is a dumbass and likes to fight people at full power. So, <laughs> I'm going to say that before. So, if Superman can infinitely get stronger, then Superman would pummel Goku. I, I would say that. But Superman, he actually has caps. That's actually been proven a lot. Even though I know you guys are under the impression that there's no limit. That's not true. Because even in the Superman official like website, like DCComics.com and all that, you look it up. Superman has limits. It says that. So, I don't, I don't know where... You guys are going with this no limits fallacy personally. The other person that argued that, he shouldn't just said that is not a good enough argument. What this person, once again, I, I wish I could have represented it in an argument because I can throw it down perfectly so anyone can read it and any, no one can, they can argue it, but they can't really, like, they can't debunk it really because it's been shown in there. So, anyways, Superman, okay, so he may get, so this guy is kind of giving in and saying he may do it. Okay. Anyways, covering this was one of the biggest reasons why I was convinced to do number two, episode two. Thanks to Soup's absorbing his our, our fourth, or abusing our fourth role at the time, an extremely important reason for why we decided Superman could reach whatever power he wanted was how he could always fly to any star in any galaxy and just kind of chill. If Goku used an instant transmission to follow him, he couldn't stick around forever because he can't breathe in space. Okay. I guess at the time, like you said, he can breathe in space. I mean, he fought Beerus in space. So I don't know why we don't... And even Vegeta, back in the day, was in space. And even his father was in space. Frieza was in space. Bardock and the whole Saiyan race was in space when they were blowing the planet up. I think that's pretty fair to say that if if pretty much most of the, the, uh, the Saiyans that got blasted by Frieza one-shotted... And his father can breathe in space, and Vegeta can breathe in space. I, I think it's pretty fair to say that Saiyans can breathe in space. Is there an episode showing Goku choking in space? I don't know. I don't remember. You know, it's been a while, and I, I am going back and watching it all. I just didn't get a chance to finish it all. I'm almost done with the original Dragon Ball. The point is, is that if, 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 if Goku couldn't breathe in space, and they actually showed that, I would say that's more of a death by writer. Like, a stupid mess up, because... He probably forgot or something, or at the time. It's, it's the plot. It's just like, Superman can tank a shotgun, right? But I can show you a comic strip right now of uh, uh, Superman being knocked out by a shotgun blast. 
So we all know go Superman can take a shotgun, okay? Like, but the writer, for some stupid reason, made it, it's 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 plot induced. That's there's a difference between plot holes and feats. And this right here is kind of I'm not going to agree. There's no way. And if if Goku knows how to sense the energy, okay, okay. So even if Goku could keep up, he'd eventually run out of energy, while Superman would be actively gaining solar energy. Not true, because Goku can instantly teleport to follow Superman every time. If Goku didn't allow him to power up. And Goku has Sensu Beans, which you guys did give it to him in the fight. I, I did remember that. I'm not saying he deserves them or not, but based on your argument, I could throw that in there. And Goku always did have Sensu Beans in every fight. Except in Super in the tournament, that was considered illegal. But you watch all the other... Um, fights he always came equipped with sensu bean so that is part of his arsenal so okay but they, they're saying that he would get tired this is the next example and by the way all goku has to do is eat one of those and he would not be hungry for 10 days and he for him to get exhausted superman would have to fight him every time he kept teleporting to him in my opinion superman would just keep running and trying to power up, and Goku would just teleport after him. Goku doesn't really wear out from traveling. He does eventually, but if Superman, for instance, can fly to a star in one second, Goku's not going to get tired in one second of, <laughs> of teleporting. Okay, and then Superman runs to another star. Once again, one second. I mean, I guess if they could do that for ten days. Goku would be fine, because a sensu being lasts ten days. And if Goku's carrying, he's always got the big pouch. We're talking 20, 30-some beans. So that would take months of just cat and mouse i guess if you want to call it now if they turned around and fought each time for 10 20 minutes then goku would have to pop a bean probably once every hour or two goku has been shown and this is something i'll admit because i'm willing to actually show on my side is that even a tournament of power he was getting tired towards the end but that's also because he fought someone like jiren i'm not saying superman is jiren but i'm also saying he isn't you know so if Superman is as strong as Jiren or stronger, then yeah, Goku will get tired. But I, I like to see some feats that really show that. So let's continue here. Example of how we prioritize logical over scientific calculations back then. I wish we had covered this better in both episodes. And yeah, it sounds pretty lame, which is why it doesn't happen in the animation. That would be pretty damn boring. I have to agree with that. So... What do you think about the feats he used to support Superman's victory, which have been debunked by others? I'll say it that way. While I'm sure there are plenty of feats we've showcased which could be easily argued against, especially from seasons one and two, in some cases there will be an element of subjectivity, subjectivity when it comes to interpreting facts. For example, there's a feat where Superman lifts a book of infinite pages occupying the same space which covers every story ever written in past and future. Ultraman, who's essentially Superman's equal, reads the last page of this book. But if the book has infinite pages, how can there be a last page? Well, either you consider the previous statement made about the book to be false, or Ultraman is so powerful he can read past infinity. However, however the hell this works, because Death Battle deals with so many ridiculously power and physics breaking characters, there'll be plenty of feats that everyone will interpret differently. That's one of the reasons why I'm glad the current death battle analysis discussions involve so many people these days as opposed to how it was before, just me, before we joined Rooster Teeth. If this feat were put through the death battle ringer today, perhaps we would gauge it differently. But generally, I try to give a character and their feats the benefit of the doubt and examine them at their maximum potential, and then see if it fits with what else the character has accomplished. Okay, so with that being said, if you're going to give it the benefit of the doubt, then you should have gave Goku the benefit of the doubt. You know, as far as when he fought Majin Buu. I'm not even going to go into the uh, uh, Beerus arc. Goku took out Buu, which Buu had the power to destroy the whole universe just by screaming alone. And he was able to warp reality, you know. So, benefit of the doubt speaking, Goku... And, and how it works in Dragon Ball. This, this is proven. You can look it up. How much damage they can put out is how much damage they can take. That's just how it works. Their, their power and durability are pretty much equal. So, to be able to take out someone that ha you know, has ability to do X, Y, Z, then that means you have the durability of it, too. That's, so, you'd have to give them the benefit of the doubt. Some would call that wanking, but by your statement there, 
you would have to give him that benefit of the doubt. And if Goku as a child outran a solar flare, which is the speed of light, and he did that at age 11, <laughs> he, he ran, grabbed the glasses from Master Roshi, came back, put them on so Tien couldn't blind him. That's a speed of light feat right there when he was a kid. So, once again, like, there, but you guys used Snake Way as a way, which I, I, to me, close up fighting, he, it, there's, there's FTL feats, I believe, for Dragon Ball characters, but when it comes to long term traveling, that, I don't, I don't believe that they can, they, that's when they start to lose. For instance, if they had to race around the world or galaxies, I think Superman and Flash would easily destroy the whole Z universe, no problem in running. But when it comes to close fighting, that's when stuff changes. Like, combat speed and traveling speed are, are just two different things. I digress, though. How did you guys come up with the gravity formula? I don't remember this. I remember they used it, so I'm going to try to understand this one. While digging through Goku analysis on a variety of versus forums, I noticed that all had one thing in common. They all were using Goku's full potential were all incredibly different. It seemed nobody could agree on how to correctly measure Goku's power at the end of the series. And for good reason. His power and limits are fairly inconsistent. Not nearly as drastic as in Superman's case. Okay, so at least he's admitting here not as drastic as in Superman. So, okay. So, in other words, he's admitting that Superman is way more inconsistent. But then if you read the last paragraph, he wants to give people a benefit of the doubt for their feats. So, that's really contradicting himself from the last, I mean, when you think, well, I mean, go back and read it. I try to give a character in their feats the benefit of the doubt and examine their maximum potential. But if people show the maximum potential, so, so you're using everyone's arguments on how strong Goku is to determine that, oh, he's, I'm going, and then, okay, I, I, I see what you're doing here. Anyways, not nearly as drastic as in Superman's case, but still an issue I ran into. A lot of these forum arguments were talking about some incredibly overcomplicated method in order to get exact numbers, which seems to be a recurrent issue. So I intentionally tried to boil it down to something as simple as possible. So you made Goku a simpleton, but then you took Superman and gave him the benefit of the doubt. So you wanked Superman and you kept Goku in a probably like a let's just meet in the middle type of thing. That, to me, is at least what it sounds like what you wrote here. With the objective of finding ballpark estimates rather than exact figures, I assumed this would be the safest bet. Whether or not it was the right move is up to you, but what the Dragon Ball universe, which has a known top speed, it's Mach 1.5 according to the Daizenshu, based on the gravity formula. So the Dragon Ball universe is known as top speed. It's Mach 1.5 according to the Daizenshu. Now that's interesting. So wait, why not? But of all things, a flying Nimbus. The Nimbus is one of the few things in Dragon Ball Universe which is known has an top speed. Oh, I'm sorry. I read a sentence there. I was like, what? Okay, flying Nimbus. Okay, was flying at 1.5 based on the gravity formula in our calculation of the 28-hour snake wave feat. It appeared Goku's top speed at his peak before training with King Kai would have been right around the Nimbus's top speed, and after his training, he far surpassed it. Turns out the last time Goku ever specifically relied on Nimbus when he was in a hurry was around this time in the story. And from then on, he just flew. <laughs> yeah, preferred his own flight ability over it. It seemed like a perfect fit, and I wish we had mentioned that in the episode because it may have helped present the gravity formula better. As it is, a lot of people misinterpreted how the gravity formula works, especially in regards to Goku's strength, which we appeared to undersell a lot when we should have been more clear about how his key affects it. So, okay, the Daizenshu says that Flying Nimbus flew at 1.5 speed, and the moment Goku started flying without it was their, in their interpretation that he finally was faster. I believe he was faster before it. I feel that he probably now had the ability to fly without draining himself. I think that's when he stopped using it. He's like, well, it doesn't, like, I can fly now. He could fly in his sleep now, you know what I mean, or hover. Like, that's how much control he had over his key. He didn't basically strain his body by flying so that's how i interpreted it but like you said we all interpret things differently 
I will always argue that you shouldn't have applied Pokemon type physics to Blanca because that's not how his electricity works compared to. Okay, this is random. How did I get into a Superman question? Wait, this isn't Goku or Superman question. Oh, it's actually about yesterday's block. Nice. And yes, I agree with you. So type comparison element hasn't held quite as much shock in the debates for other Pokemon. Okay, stop. Oh, I thought, I thought I went for a pun there. Outside the battle. Okay, whatever. I'm skipping that one. So maybe Superman beats Goku when you composite them like you did. But can't Goku defeat other versions of Superman? Now, here's the thing. Before I read this. Superman composite? Okay, cool. But what about Goku composite? What about Xenoverse Goku? I mean, he has destroyed universe after universe. And he has done... He basically would shit on Zenos today. If you guys know Zenos from Super. The little egghead guy that looked like Stewie from Family Guy. Goku would stomp the hell out of him. Xenoverse Goku. But, I digress. I don't see why not. If we cherry pick different iterations of Goku and Superman, I'm sure there'd be plenty of specialized matchups where Goku would come out on top. For example, I'd be really surprised if the Superman from the old mid-90s anime universe could stand up to Goku and Dragon Ball Z. i say this could apply to most of the matchups we've done. However, Death Battle doesn't usually focus on specific times like that. Aside from some very particular matchups, I prefer to avoid the selective era approach because it involves a lot of additional personal choice from our part that would affect the fight. So he's basically saying that they're not cherry pickers. Unintentionally or not, also I believe it would usually just leave more questions than answers. This is something that was pretty much always in the, been the case for Death Battle. Now I'm going to have to disagree with that because if you guys did actually use the most current version of Superman versus the most current version Goku, Goku would win. There's no hell in way. The only Superman I can see possibly winning would be, like, Pre-Crisis. Or the one-up Superman. What was that? Cosmic Armor? But he's a fusion with Ultron. So, like, that's not even a fair fight at this point. Because now that that's not even really Superman. That's him fusing. Or, no, that, that's that's the armor. That's a robot or some shit. Like, so you can't really say that as... That's not Clark Kent, so to speak. So, but... And there was, there was a fusion Superman as well. Ultron and Superman. But if that's the case, then Goku should be able to fuse for Vegeta then. You know, like, that would be, to me, a more of a fair match. Because, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely admit, and Super, Superman would probably beat the shit out of Goku in, in that fight, you know? Phew. That covers up that. If a question you posted yesterday wasn't specifically answered, it's probably addressed by a different question. When it comes down to it, Goku for was, was easily one of my most important episodes we've ever done. Thank you for reading. Okay. Okay, so, in the end, in my opinion, there wasn't enough good questions to really answer his reasoning as to why Superman won. They asked, like, how did you come up with the gravity formula? To me, I would want, and I know they said, there, he said he went to the forums and there's people that were saying, well, Goku did X, Y, Z, whatever. I would have asked him more, like, why did you use Snake Way as a speed feat when clearly on Namek, he ran around the planet in, like, one second? And that planet is bigger than Earth, and obviously the speed of light can go around the planet seven times. Like, not, like even that, or, you know, just, or what about Majin Buu, or, or explain how, key, like, do you really understand how key works? Because how key works is this. Did you do, you do you just simply disagree with how the key works? Because that's how it's perceived in their work. Like I want him to kind of be more because he's he he still sees them as as Marvel and DC characters. So that's kind of like that's kind of really the separation and misunderstanding of people that aren't uh, Dragon Ball fans or don't know much about it. They see it in a whole different way. They compare it to Marvel and DC. And that's just kind of, that's just how it is. And I feel like the talk would be to explain those type of things. Right now, you finally get a chance with him, and then you're asking, in my opinion, stupid questions that are pretty much made to be filibuster. Because, yeah, you could ask him this, and he's going to answer it, but it's not really going to change much as to understanding the power of it. For a good example would be they used Goku carrying 40,000 ton armbands 
But if you watch the original Dragon Ball, Goku was pushing mountains and big ass rocks with his bare hands, and Krillin was swimming and dragging a big ass yacht, like a boat that people go on vacation. He was pulling that as part of his training. I, I, all I'm saying is, is if that's the case, then then Krillin, as a little child, is stronger than Goku in the Buu saga. You get my point. It's there's a lot of plot holes and. The benefit of the doubt that right there tells me that there was there was some cherry picking. It, it's, I'm not saying it's he did it on purpose. What I'm saying is is based on what I just said. It, that's really what it comes down to is there was a lot of benefit of the doubt. Superman got extreme benefit of the doubt. Goku got some type of like ballpark guesstimate, low wink type of type of feats. That's what I'm getting out of this personally. Like I said. I don't mind you guys. I love you guys. I'm going to continue to support you on your channel and everything and buy some gear and stuff. I just feel that you really need a true representative of Goku in this. Someone that can actually explain it to you. I guess it comes down to if you guys are actually going to agree you know, to what people say. But I think you guys really just need to understand the Dragon Ball universe more. I don't, I don't think you guys understand it enough. You guys are approaching it from a comic perspective where <clears throat> you guys say, oh, well, the narrator, of course, in Superman comics are always like, there's no limits to Superman's strength. What can he not do? And so that's why, like, in your guys' head, you grew up reading that or, or going with it. So you're like, okay, well, Superman has no limits. Foul. I, I, I could see why you guys think that. It's because if it's said in the comic, it must be true. It's, it's, that, it's just like if you find it on the Internet, it must be true. It's, it's the same type of mentality. You know, where I'm just going to believe it because I've been told it from what I'm reading my resources from. Even if it's from the resource or not, you're just going to believe it, right? Versus the other show, they they explain it, but then you don't understand it. Because, like I said, the key, their damage and their durability is, is equal. That's just how it works. And you guys don't know that. So then, there. that's why power scaling is very important in Dragon Ball. Because... Here's the biggest question I'm going to ask anybody that's not a Dragon Ball fan. This is easy. I'm going to ask you right now. Who would win in a fight? Uh, Frieza, Cell, or Boo? And I guarantee if anyone never... If anyone ever picks anyone but Boo, that just shows you right. They have no idea what the hell they're talking about. No matter what. Okay, Frieza's Z Saga. I'm going to say it that way. Obviously, there's Golden Frieza now. The point is, is like... There's nothing those two Frieza or Cell could do to Majin Buu. They literally would be punching and kicking him and he would just be standing there. Watch Trunks fight Cell. Someone that chopped Frieza in half one-shotted. Someone he broke his sword on the androids, remember that? But he trained again. And when he got the perfect form Cell, he was literally punching him as hard as he could. And Cell just stood there. He didn't even flinch. That just shows you the difference in gap of power. Here's somebody that before easily chopped up Frieza who is known to blow up a planet with one finger. See, that's the key thing I'm talking about. Their durability and their attack is literally the same. So, of course, there's... Okay, special beams and stuff is a different story. But when it comes to pure, like, punching and stuff like that, that then their durability and that, that's pretty much the same. So, anywho, you guys, that's the rant. I'm going to wrap it up. This is pretty damn long. Thanks if you guys made it to the end. If you made it to the end, say, yay, I made it to the end. Nidge, pin me, and we'll see who see who does it. Anyways, if you guys want to join Hood Nation or everything, your chance to do so is going to be like right here. Like always, you know, we get that playlist to get your feet wet. If you need a cup of tea, I'll go find it. It's out there. Believe it. This is Nidge from DFX. And I'm out.